Social media is ruining our lives. He ain't lying. <laughs> it is really ruining our lives, man. I, as you guys, as you guys know, most people are not critical thinkers. They can't think for themselves. You know, their 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 think their thought process is based off of Twitter and TikTok users, TikTok comments, uh, Twitter comments, and Twitter tweets and all this type of stuff. People keep people cannot fathom to think for themselves at all. Like they can't think for themselves. They can't formulate opinion. By themselves, they all sound, every person on TikTok and Twitter sound the exact same. There's no, there's no, you're not going to hear nothing new from anybody on Twitter. That's why I don't, I don't be on Twitter. Because as soon as I see a Twitter comment, I just, I literally want to delete the whole app. Bro. It's really that bad. TikTok's the same thing too. The people on there are complete brain dead, low IQ, mayonnaise eating sandwich eaters. Like they're so bad. They're terrible. Trash. They're garbage. They like they it's it's like they cannot think for themselves. It's really bad. That's why I don't be getting into debates or conversations in the comment sections because people just don't have no sense at all. No sense. And then in real life, when you debate them or try to confront them, they run away or like they don't they they like stay quiet. They're so weird, bro. Like they're so weird. But anyway, let's see how social media is ruining our lives because it's definitely not ruining my life. <laughs> I definitely know a balance of social media. I, I definitely know the toll of uh, the social media addiction, though. I can definitely say that for a fact because it definitely had an impact on my life. Uh, back then, I used to, you know, be on social media all the time. And now I don't I don't be on social media as much as I used to. I take breaks. I make sure that I don't be on there as long as often. I can't even be on there often. I feel like when I'm on there too often, I'm like, what is the purpose of me being on here? Like, why am I? What is the purpose of me doing that? There's nothing wrong with looking at social media, looking at content or whatever, but it's like we're indulging in it so much. It's like, what is the purpose? Like, you're not, you're not, you're not building yourself. You're not doing anything. You know what I mean? Like, especially when you're on Instagram looking at models only. What, what is that? What what benefit is that doing? When you're looking at all these men showing off their their V cuts and their abs all day to the woman out there, what you, what is that doing for you? No, no, no. Actually, what is that doing for you? What purpose is that doing for you? Except making you envious, making you jealous, making you sadder about uh, about somebody that you wish you could be. What is that actually doing? Answer that question. What is that doing for you? What is TikTok, watching TikToks doing for you? If you're not watching educational TikToks, you're just watching comedy, then there's nothing wrong with watching comedy and making, like, you know, people that make you laugh or whatever. But if you're just watching TikTok scrolling all day, and you and your your day is not productive. Your whole day is just watching TikTok and talk about the latest show. What what is the latest show that I talk about now? Jeffrey Dahmer, whatever about a murderer, a serial killer. Like you have like you have to have a purpose. Like your purpose shouldn't be what's what what's happening in this episode. Let's talk about this episode of a TV show. Like that's that's idiotic. That's you're wasting your time. Read a book or something. Read a book about being successful. Read the Bible actually. Don't even read that. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Get closer to God and have a relationship with Jesus Christ before he comes back. That's what's most important. Not no Jeffrey Dahmer TV show or some or or like TikTokers are saying some stupid relatable stuff about a relationship. Stop. Anyway, let's see how social media is ruining our lives, man. Try not to pause the video too much because this video is kind of long. You know, that's kind of inevitable because I'll be pausing all the time. But um, what is this? Posters of this video including the use of third party clips and content consist you of Fair use under the okay, 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 okay. So, I might not do that too, but okay, cool, cool. Whatever. It's 9 a.m. You wake up from a notification on your phone, okay, just a quick reply, and then suddenly you've scrolled every single social media app on your phone, and it's 3 p.m. and you haven't left your bed. So, you attempt to start the day even though it's already 3 p.m. in the afternoon. There's a list of things you need to do today, but you're stuck on your phone, and then suddenly it's 9 p.m. and you've barely moved since the afternoon. What the fuck? So, you attempt, yo, yo, you cannot lie. This happens to everybody. Literally. And I found myself, when I do this, I find myself getting so, like, not depressed, but, like, feeling down about myself. Like, I literally sleep. I, I go to sleep, right? Wake up. First thing I check is my phone. Like, check my phone. Oh, oh this person texts me. Uh, see the notifications. And I'm on, my I'm on my phone on my bed for at least, like, a good 30 to an hour or an hour and a half, bro. That's not good. The first thing I should be doing is brushing my teeth, praying. And then reading my Bible or taking a walk or doing something and then getting on my phone. 
The first thing I shouldn't be doing is texting someone saying how you doing or good morning. Absolutely not, bro. Then I have stuff to do after that, and that's taking up way too much of my time, bro. Way too much of my time. We don't get time back. That's what people don't understand. We never get time back ever. We never get no time back, bro. You can't take it back. You can't give more time. Once, once, once 24 is done, that's it. Make every day productive. Don't waste your time watching social media all day. Do something productive. Stop being a bum. Have dinner and yet again, you can barely go 10 seconds without looking at your phone. So you open up Instagram quickly to look at everyone's story and then suddenly it's 3 a.m. and you hate yourself in your life because you've compared it to everyone's picture perfect life on social media. So you pass off not depressed that. and then you wake up to another notification just to quickly reply to and the cycle continues. Don't, don't, don't. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I make commentary, lifestyle, and creative videos. Now I know today's video is not that groundbreaking to everyone, but I really wanted to discuss and spread awareness about these issues that I'll be discussing today. But before we get into the topic, I want to thank Filmora for sponsoring today's video. So I get a lot of questions from you guys appreciate, asking- appreciate about the, the, the sponsorship and your bread. We do not care about that, sir. <laughs> we do not care about that. Give us that content. If you really want to stay connected, there is a new service, and supposedly it is the next big thing. The latest cyber drug of choice is called Twitter. Sign up if you've never used this before. Wrong. Your timeline. This takes you to what's popular and trending. You can add different effects to it. Share it with Twitter, Facebook, Foursquare. Wake up, your bot! Wake up! Stop watching Twitter. Stop tweeting. Stop watching TikTok. You're a bot. That's a sneaker. <laughs> And Tumblr. Social media has rapidly grown over the decade and shows no signs of slowing down. What started as an innocent platform to help us connect with one another has turned into a platform designed and programmed to get us hooked. Engagement with social media and our cell phones releases a chemical called dopamine. Dopamine is the exact same chemical that makes us feel good when we smoke, when we drink, and when we gamble. In other words, highly addictive. Social media today strategically rewards us with instant gratification such as likes, comments, notifications, rewarding us with the addictive dopamine. Some apps even replicate the process of pulling a slot machine lever with the pull to refresh feature. That's a conscious design choice. Those apps are usually capable of continuously updating content, but the pull action provides an addicting illusion of control over that process. Yikes. Nowadays, it's pretty hard to draw the line between what's real and what's not. Like, literally, there are computer-generated influencers. I made a brand new song just for my McAlian. We've got to remember that Ooh. social media generally is a highlight reel of everyone's lives, a polished version of our reality. Conveniently, with social media creating a whole new persona and portraying a virtually perfect but fabricated life on social media to get others to like and validate us has never been easier. Social media has normalized narcissism and superficiality. We've become so self-centered and focused on making our lives post worthy to show off our lives and in return we lose quality time with others and ourselves we're simply no longer truly living in the moment one of the biggest issues when we start craving these rewards of compliments and likes and comments is that it distorts our values very true very be true. an very influencer true. how to become a fashion influencer, an influencer. Social media influencer. yo you know what's crazy uh brandon if you're watching this video we literally talked about this the other day we was literally talking about how Everybody wants to be a YouTuber, influencer, Twitch streamer, whatever. Nobody wants to be a construction worker. Nobody wants to cut down trees. Nobody wants to, you know, become a farmer. Nobody wants to do any of this. Everybody want to be a YouTuber, the next OnlyFans uh, model, uh, you know, Twitch streamer, next Kai Sinat. Everybody want to be a gamer, streamer, Twitch streamer, whatever. But nobody wants to help our society with nothing. <laughs> nobody want to be a president. Nobody want to be no governor. Nobody want to be nothing. Everybody just want to be on the internet and make money, which is ideal and very good. But at the same time, it's very, very detrimental to our society. Bro. Like we need more plumbers. We need more, we need more like workers, uh, like something. Like we can't have. We can't just have mad. Like everybody's not funny. Everybody's not funny. Everybody can't give the same advice. Everybody just you know what I mean. Like man, man, man. man. Social media influencers. They're known as Insta Kids. The best thing about being an influencer is you get to do really, really cool things. More and more people of all ages want to become online famous, also Yo, known. What is that grandma doing? Yo, don't you got 
Yo, right. so don't you got so grandkids to look after or something, bro? Thanks. What are you doing? Show you was wearing, like, with your bro, body and cycle. what was going on? Nah, I have to go back to that. What was that, bro? Grandma is out here flexing. People of all ages want to become online famous. Yo, also yo I can't pause influencers. it. It's so evident nowadays that yo, I cannot people pause it, of all ages want... Yo, look at this. Yo, this. Yo, bro. Wait, pink? Is this a is this a Playboy thing? Yo, 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 yo! This late this old lady got more money from this this lady got more money than me, and I bet you it's not from Social Security, bro. Yo, yo! I bet you these glasses are mad like they're they they are like probably more money than my whole house. Yo, yo. That is crazy, bro, bro. Shouldn't you be like making some apple pies or something? Why? What are you doing on Instagram? Want to become online famous, also known as influencers. It's so evident nowadays that you can get pretty much famous for. <laughs> I, I have to laugh. I'm sorry. This is so ridiculous. I can't stand here. I can't. This, this, this is this is what I'm talking about. You you can do absolutely. You can do the most stupidest stuff. I saw Nyquil with chicken. And you get millions. You could do stupid, barbaric, dumb things on the internet. And you get famous. You can literally do absolutely nothing and get famous. Yet you have people that work hard, do sweat earned content, edit videos, and they don't they don't get no shine of the day. But you have untalented, not even funny people out here. I'm not I'm not I don't know who this guy is. I'm not going after Jacob. I, oh, yeah. He was like, wasn't he famous on uh, Musical.ly? I'm not going after this guy. I'm talking about in general. There's untalented, you know, Pac-Man type people that do absolutely nothing. They're basic human beings. They have no personality in real life. They're not even funny. And yet they're popular. Actually insane, bro. Sit here and hear this. If Yo. you're going to be in this house, we want, like, hard workers, people that are actually, like, caring about their content. And what all do you want from me? <laughs> We've seen it happen too often on social media where influencers are those who aspire to be one. Go to extremes just to stay popular or to be in the algorithm's favor. And it's quite yeah. disturbing how common it is for underage children to be exploited by parents and social media platforms, all for some cash reward. Yo. Yo, and that is most of TikTok, bro. Yo. 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 Oh my goodness. One of the trendiest cultures on social media nowadays is flexing, which is basically showing off your wealth even if you don't actually have it. A lawsuit was filed by his landlord, but he was sued by DPN Cars Corp for missing a $6,620 monthly payment on the luxury vehicle. <coughs> <laughs> it's not uncommon for a lot of these influencers to buy a product for an Instagram shot and return it after because they can't actually afford it. These younger children who are easily influenced and vulnerable are becoming more materialistic and aspire to be like their role models. <laughs> So sad. Haters, you're only doing it like little tech. Really like, expensive. Like, like, my first reaction was, I, I want that. Gosh, oh my gosh, oh my. Why do you like Gucci so much, though? Because it's fancy. Yeah. Just a response to loud noise. Although becoming internet famous <sighs> has never been easier, there are its cons, which includes hypercritics and a toxic trend of cancel culture. Jimmy Fallon is over party. I did blackface as Nicki Minaj in 2011. There are no excuses for it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We are very sorry. I am sorry for that. I'm so sorry. I will be sorry for until the day I die. Cancel culture, simply put, is slamming a person commonly famous for some questionable actions or allegations. A lot of these people behind screens are hypercritical and expecting everyone to be perfect at all times and never make mistakes. Some users go as far as to doxing these public figures and sending death threats to their family and friends. The most toxic thing about- You know what's, you know what's so crazy about this? The people that do this are the most cowardice people on the planet. These people that do this are the most- Like, cancel culture are like people who are- who attribute to cancel culture and participate in that, they're the most cowardice people on the planet. 
Like if that if that was done to them, they would probably hate their life for they like they were probably SD, bro. They were probably SD, but they know that that person is popular and they they can overcome it. Sometimes they don't overcome it, and they're going they're like going through their episodes. They have to go to therapy and all that. But like the people that participate in that, they are cowards. They were cowards. They were not getting no boxing ring. They were not fight. They were not do nothing. They are cowards over a computer screen or phone screen. They are cowards, bro. They can't hold a conversation. They're on their phone all day with Cheetos in their mouth all freaking day. They don't, they, they can't hold a conversation. They are cowards. All of them are cowards. Now, nobody's saying that you can't hold somebody accountable for something. But it's like, you're trying, like, you're literally trying to, like, take away their life and hold that against them for the rest of their life. There's a forgiveness out. Now, granted, now, cancel culture is not really as bad as it is now. As it was back then, I should say, anyway. Back then, it was terrible. But now, people, like, fans are, like, fighting against it now. You know, fans are fighting against it. And, you know, um, people are, you know, starting to be more aware of it. And people are, it's kind of like a meme now. If you like, are you going to get canceled? Like, it's kind of like a meme now. The hate train to cancel someone is that most of these users don't even fact check or wait to hear the other side of the story. Yep. Tweets, Instagram, Facebook, blue ticked accounts, especially ones with disabled comments, are not credible sources of information. <clears throat> Following the trend and mainstream narratives has led to less social media users forming their own opinions and completely blocking out opposing opinions or factors that don't fit into their narrative. It's so yep. important to listen to other opinions to hear where they're coming from and cross-referencing yep. multiple sources to find the truth instead of relying on some clickbait headline intended to spark outrage. Yep. People, like I said, people don't, people are so freaking lazy. They don't want to go through the extra work to see if stuff is actually true. Like, for example, Andrew Tate, the most recent situation, the stuff that happened with him, like the, the sexual allegations, all that, and the kidnapping and all that, all that was not true. But everybody believed that it was true. Though. <laughs> oh, yo, people. Wow. Nowadays, it's quite common to glorify and romanticize conditions and issues like mental health and eating disorders. It's gotten to the point where certain people, especially the younger ones on social media, feel pressured to have a condition or an issue in order to feel included. Depression? I got it. Anxiety? I got it. Heartbreak? I got it. Therapy? I got like, it. Bro, you need help. You need help. You need help. Why are you why are you making this like a good thing? Oh, I have depression. Oh, I listen to Juice World when I'm sad. You need help. This is not something to glorify. When is when is it okay? When is it super happy to be depressed? When is it okay to be depressed? Why 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 are we aren't glorifying being happy? Why is it okay to be depressed? Like why? I remember back then, if you was a depressed emo kid, people would not talk to you. People would not want to hang out with you because you're just you're just always down. You're always talking negative about yourself. You're low self esteem. You're just nobody wants to hang out with you because you're just you're, you're you you bring no you bring nothing to the table but negativity. So nobody's gonna hang out with you. Now it's like everybody want to hang out with you if you're depressed. Like, are you serious? Now, like like I said, because I have to I have to fact check everything I say, everything I say. That's I'm not saying that depressed people can't have friends or anything like that. But to glorify the 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 disease and the disorder that you have is not a good thing. Like, why are we glorifying obesity? Like, do we do we not forget that that kills people? Diabetes is that not a thing anymore? Like, we we like does that not a thing anymore? Like, you know. Okay, that's not a thing anymore. But let's let's glorify it. Let's oh yeah, about oh woman empowerment. Yeah, my body. <laughs> struggle against that pain when we tell ourselves that we shouldn't be feeling this way and we should just be happy we're not only upset about the pain that we're going through but then now we can also feel like ashamed for feeling that pain in the first place and that could lead to a lot of depression and anxiety in the long run toxic positivity depression anxiety in other words, good vibes only promotes and pressures excessive happiness and a positive outlook on pain, ironically resulting in a toxic experience as it represses our other humane emotions and struggles. Rich people don't sleep eight hours a day. 
That's a third of your life. Imagine not doing anything fun or going anywhere for the next eight years, including Saturday and Sunday. That's what I did. Hustle culture has a big overlap with workaholism in general and that idea of toxic productivity. The issue with toxic positivity and hustle culture is the portrayal and message on social media. It's become easier to compare ourselves to these posts of others who are seemingly always positive, happy, and hardworking, which is unrealistic and and harmful to our mental health. But I think, I think, I think the problem with that is that the main reason why people don't do that, like the main reason why people don't like show off their sad side or whatever, unless like they're really down bad, or like mainly like when they're like doing bad, they just take a break. The main reason why they don't go out their way to say something about that is because they will look vulnerable, especially men. If if a man was sat up there, got on camera, cried, and said something about like their life or something like that. Or whatever they will, like people will clown him for that that's why people don't do that people don't get up there they just always seem happy all the time you know what i mean but i also think that if you're gonna if you're gonna go through something you're gonna always talk about positivity positivity talk about your negatives also so people could people don't think that you're just some perfect person you get what i'm saying i'm not a perfect person ever i will always tell you guys my downs and ups in my life every time i do a video or if there's something i want to talk about that's negative or positive i'm gonna tell you guys you get what I'm saying? Because I'm a human just like you. You get what I'm saying? I think most more content creators need to do that. You know, explain that they're a human being and they're not perfect. You know what I mean? That doesn't mean deliberately do stuff. But like, you know what I mean? Show your ups and downs so people can know that you're a human also. Because on social media, you have this picture that you're perfect and people want to be like you and that makes them depressed. Because it's like, oh, I can't be this person. I'm not perfect like them. But if you show that you're a human just like them, you have struggles just like them, then they can understand you. You know what I mean? That's what the whole part of a relationship online is. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. If I spend too long on social media, I feel a bit depressed when I come back to reality because it's so much that like, I can't handle it. We've come to the point where our reality becomes bland and uninteresting. Quite a lot of us use social media as a form of escapism where we want to simply escape reality and the emotions we're currently feeling, which is generally negative. FOMO, fear of missing out. Yeah. I just need to know what's going on and I just feel like I need to answer before like I'm out of the loop kind of thing, so. We ironically disconnect ourselves with real life and become even more isolated. They are coming. 22 minutes ago, 300 likes. Send me 6,000 followers and I want to get to 100 followers. On Musical.ly, I have over 1,000. I feel really happy. And you want to be followed by more people. Yeah. My highest one right now is 643. 547. <laughs> Most of us seek for value. What purpose does that have? What purpose do you have in posting your story and showing off your life? What purpose does that have? Except viewers. What purpose does that have for you? If you are not a content creator, if you are not promoting anything, if you are not doing it for money or anything of that sort, what purpose does it have? Like, for example, I'm starting to reflect. I'm going to keep it on thousand with you. I still do streaks, but it's mainly because my friends influence me to do it. I might stop that because there's no purpose in me doing streaks. There's no purpose in me doing streaks on Snapchat. And I know a lot of you might clown me for that. Because <clears throat> it's like, yo, oh, why are you doing streaks? I don't know. I can't even tell you why. I'm going to stop. I'm definitely going to stop because there's no purpose in me doing it. <clears throat> Sending a blank screen and saying GNS every day or G GMS every day has no purpose. I have no purpose in doing that. There's absolutely no purpose in doing that. I'm not going to show you my daily life every single day. Who are you, Jesus Christ? You don't need to know what I do in everyday life. I'm the only person that's supposed to know what I do in my everyday life is my house and jesus christ himself that's it nobody else and probably my close friends if i want to tell them certain stuff you get what i'm saying or if they ask me how did my day go on and i explain my day but there's no reason i should be posting to the whole world so they can see what i do what purpose do you have in doing that because it's all about purpose what is your purpose in doing that no purpose no purpose in doing that so stop doing it <laughs> come on man
validation on social media from external factors like followers and likes and comments swipes and matches <clears throat> the unrealistic expectations and altered realities on social media make us more self-centered and narcissistic yet we've become even more insecure before life on social media because constantly comparing our lives to others has never been easier it's become so destructive for our self-esteem and our relationship and friendships as we compare ourselves to these unrealistic expectations snapchat yep. dysmorphia with young patients wanting and this is this is so bad when it comes to relationships too if you are a person that is depressed based off a relationship you're seeing all these relationships of people happy in a relationship and you've been down bad you know destroyed by your significant other or ex or whatever stop what stop going on social media especially instagram instagram would body you on that and tiktok too tiktok will body you on that if you if you're if you're conscious and your mental is not prepared for that type of mindset or in that type of atmosphere stay away from it stay away from it it is not hard just delete social media delete it delete it go on youtube 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 could navigate what videos will be recommended to you instagram shows you anything facebook oh, if you have facebook what is wrong with you unless you are 50 years old why do you have facebook or unless you're a content creator why do you have facebook i'm, I'm kind of joking by the way uh i don't want to trigger people because they may have facebook but look if you are a person that is struggling with the trauma of your last relationship or just getting in a relationship in general delete the social media that propagates that stop watching people's story all day delete it delete it focus on yourself get give your life to jesus christ let him help you you'll find out his will for your life and and move on and race to the finish you feel me do that stop stop watching social media all day you have there's no purpose in doing that there's no purpose Absolutely no purpose, bro. Oh, it's muted. Selfie dysmorphia, a body image disorder defined as a need to heavily edit one's own digital image and an intense dissatisfaction with one's own appearance after using digital filters. I know a Botox, whole bunch like of a Snapchat filter, right? That you're walking females. around with a Snapchat filter. If it's a selfie, I will do it with a filter. It's to make it look, I guess, more pretty. So many females do this. So many females are guilty of this. So many. So many. I was also guilty of this when I was younger, when I used to be insecure. Now I don't do no filters at all. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I'm fully confident in myself. Obviously, I'm not the most attractive guy on the planet, and but I believe that I am handsome. I believe so. You may laugh. You may think, oh, you're ugly or whatever. That's cool. I was beautifully wonderfully made. That's cool. That's your opinion. That's cool. You think I'm ugly. That's cool. Cool. Oh, that has nothing to do with me, though. <laughs> you think you calling me ugly is going to make me feel some type of way? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> Come on. Anyway, people, so many females are guilty of this. You know, they think they're ugly. And it's like, you're, you're, you're making your, when you do this, you're making, you're pushing your self-esteem going even downer. Because it's almost like you're saying, I cannot look any good without my, my, uh, uh, uh enhancement. You need an enhancement on a, on a phone filter to make yourself look good. That's never a good thing. Cause it's almost like you can't you can't accept the fact that you're naturally beautiful. You're naturally beautiful. Stop using filters. Accept how you how you look on a daily basis. When you wake up, obviously we all look rough and look like a donkey when we wake up. Obviously, but it's like when you wake up fresh enough, you know, wash your face with soap, all that, take a shower, you look nice. Be confident. Don't take no. When you're taking a picture, take it with no filter. Cause when you take and, and when you take it with um. What's it called? And I'm not saying there's not like there's like a problem with being insecure. Obviously, we all have our insecurities, right? But like, you shouldn't be insecure about how you look. Cause you look, you go outside, people look at you every day. So why are you gonna be insecure about how you look? That was, that's just mis that's just being miserable all day. You know what I'm saying? So stop using filters. Be happy about how you naturally look, and you'll eventually be like, I'm not using no filters. Or you're like, you're just will goof around with filters just to be funny sometimes. But you're not gonna use no filter to like look cute. Because people, when people look at you in real life, they're like, yo, you're ugly, bro. <laughs> you're ugly. What, like, you know what I mean? It just makes, it gives a false, a false image of you. And I even know that was a disorder, what they just said. What was the disorder? Um, 
What was it called? Patients wanting surgery so they can look more like they do in filtered selfies. Form of selfie dysmorphia. Selfie dysmorphia. Wait, what? Body image disorder can look more like they do in filtered selfies. Form of selfie dysmorphia. This dysmorphia? Selfie dysmorphia? Selfie dysmorphia. Okay. So yeah, a lot of you females are guilty of this. And stop posting pictures of you in uh, filters. Be, be, be confident about you how you naturally look. Because that's how, that's how most people are going to see you in real life. So why not post how you really look like in real life when you're posting pictures? Be confident. You're beautiful. God made you beautifully and wonderfully made. He made you carefully. He loved you. Be confident how you look. That can also go into makeup too. Because you, you enhance how you look with makeup. But it depends how much makeup you look like. If you look like a totally different person, that's a problem. But if you're just doing your eye, your, your eyebrows or like your eyelash or whatever, then that's cool. But if you're doing the whole all over the face, like clown, clown, you know, clown makeup, absolutely not. No. Like with the, the blush, like crazy to stuff. Edit one's own nah, image bro, you're, you're doing that absolute most, bro. What are you auditioning for? An acting show? Clown filters. show? Come on. If we get Botox, then it's almost like a Snapchat <coughs> filter, right? That you're walking around with a Snapchat filter. If it's a selfie, I will do it with a filter. It's to make it look, I guess, more pretty. On the rise, teen lip augmentations, breast lifts, fillers, and liposuctions. That's right, kids as young as 13 are getting them. Yet nowadays, more and more parents are gifting their younger children and even babies digital devices, generally unsupervised and unmonitored too, exposing them to all this social media toxicity. Research is starting. This is what I said. I said this to uh, one of my Christian friends. Well, yeah, I would say we're friends. We literally had a conversation and I was like, bro, my, my kid is not getting no phone. He's not getting on no social media at all until he's like a good 15, bro. 15 or 14. This kid, is if he's going to have a phone, he's getting a flip phone. If he wants to play games, he's, he's going to get a video game. Like a DS, 3DS, whatever. Switch, whatever. He'll get that and play it on the weekends or whatever. But he's not getting no phone and having no social media at like 12, 13 years old. Are you serious? I think my niece and like nephew have like a phone or something. I like, and they're like 10, 8, 9. And they have TikTok and all that, bro. Nah, bro. No, sir. Nah, bro. You're wilding. Especially what they're doing now with the whole LGBTQ and all this propaganda and all this crazy stuff to children. Nah, man. Get that out of here, bro. Nah. To show that technology, I'm not letting no toddler have no phone. You're bugging, sir. I don't care how much they cry so about my phone. You're not taking nothing away from me, bro. Well, an impact on overall well being. Like, what are you talking about? The solution is actually pretty easy. We need beautiful influencers who are notorious for cosmetic surgery, photoshopping themselves, creating a false reality on social media to unironically use a casing that says social media seriously harms your mental health. It be the same energy, sis. But on a serious note, social media isn't for everyone. It comes down to experimenting with it and whether you can build that healthy relationship or not. Don't let social media and the addiction control you. Learn to use social media in moderation, setting boundaries, monitoring your screen time, gradually decreasing your social media usage. Avoid mindlessly using social media, especially out of boredom or procrastination, or avoiding your yes, procrastination. Yes, yes, so yes, 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 yes. I like this guy. I definitely got to subscribe to this guy. This guy is smart. I like this guy. He has the same thought process as me. He's not a TikTok user, and he actually makes good points. Procrastination. I do this all the time when I'm doing writing essays. I'll be like writing something, writing like two sentences, and I'll be on my phone for like 30 minutes, and the essay be taking like like three hours to finish. Not doing that no more. Not doing that no more. I'm not on my phone all day, all day, wasting my time. I'm not doing that no more. It's quiet. It is quiet. There's no purpose of being on my phone all day doing what? What am I doing? If I'm not doing nothing productive, I'm not wasting my time on social media. If I'm not making no money, if I'm not winning no souls, or if I'm not edifying someone, or if I'm not doing any of those things, or somebody's asking me how am I doing, or having a conversation, a meaningful conversation, I'm not touching my phone. I don't even play video games like that no more. <laughs> and I used to play video games all the time. I used to plat stuff all the time. I don't do these things anymore because there's, there's, there's no purpose. I'll play video games with my friends if they ask me to play, you know, run a game or so. 
If they want to play, I'll play with my friend, but I'm not going to sit up there and play a game by myself. What am I doing that for? I'm not saying I can't have, you can't have fun playing a game by yourself or whatever, but it's like playing it for long periods of time. What purpose is that doing for just like a little bit of pleasure? You're not gaining nothing out of that. You're not streaming. You're not making no money off of it. You're not doing nothing. You're just playing just for pleasure. That's, I'm not doing that. It's quiet. I'm not doing that. That's dead. Instead, try to use social media intentionally and mindfully. Having a hobby can help to reduce social media usage too. Keep notifications for important apps or turn them all off completely. Avoid yes. starting and ending your yes. day with social media. Yes. Remember that there is a life outside social media. Yes. Learn to be truly present with others. Yes, I like yourself. this guy, bro. Stop seeking for validation on social media. Yes. Personally, the more I practice self care and remind yes. myself that my worth is not based on my likes, comments, social yes. media persona, the yes. happier my relationship is. And this is my problem when I did with my uh my Zoom 7K channel. I my validation was the subscribers and the views I was getting. That was my validation. Now I do not care how much views I get. I do videos hoping that somebody may come to Christ or they may come to the truth of Jesus Christ and they may accept Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, receive the Holy Spirit and do the same thing that I'm doing. Be a, be a servant of God. You know what I'm saying? That's my purpose and that's what I'm doing for my social media life. You know what I mean? That's my purpose. My purpose is not to get on social media and flex my clothes all day. That's not what I'm doing. I edify by doing music, videos, Bible studies, all these things on the internet. I'm not finna waste my time being on social media, caring about views or how I look. Like, what am I wasting my time for? social media the powerful thing about social media is that you can simply unfollow who you want to unfollow and curate the feed that you want to see so make social media inspiring for you and reflective on your values and goals in life yes. i hope you guys enjoyed this please do comment down below your opinions and what you think about social media and don't forget to share the video to spread awareness about these issues and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these yeah so shout out to ibrahim man uh very great video definitely gotta subscribe man i'm definitely gonna watch more of your videos uh and definitely gotta react to them because your video your videos are like we, we think the same bro you're not a tiktok bot uh <laughs> stop being a bot all right let me stop um but yeah shout out to this guy bro very cool man very cool video he definitely made a lot of good points that i agree with uh stop watching tiktok uh give your life to jesus christ he will give you a purpose because this purpose of being on social media and just watching people's story all day, working at 9 to 5, is just absolutely... And working at some place you don't even like is absolutely crazy, bro. If you like to Jesus Christ, he'll make a whole plan for you. He made a whole plan for me. I went from doing BTS videos, doing stupid gaming videos that had no purpose at all, to doing videos edifying and giving people the gospel and telling people the truth that they need to hear. The good news. And telling them that the only way they could be free from their sin is through Jesus Christ. And the only way they could get free of this bot, weird, stupid world is to accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, receive the Holy Spirit, and he'll give you a new mind and change your whole way of how you think life. And that's how I got to the place I'm at right now. So, yeah, man. Uh, stay off social media. Don't have have moderation when you're on social media. Don't be on Don't be on social media all day and don't have space for critical thinking. Think for yourself, bro. Think for yourself. It's okay to disagree with people. And it's okay to agree with people. Stop being stupid. Stop being stupid. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Give your life to Jesus Christ. And stop this delusional. Stop, stop, stop being del stop being deluded. Stop being deluded. This is for women and men. Men and women. Okay? Cool. I love y'all. If you guys enjoyed this video, go leave a like. If you guys want, uh, if you guys agree with anything I said, leave a comment below. If you disagree with anything I said, leave a comment below. If you haven't already, give a like to Jesus Christ. This is the most important thing in your life right now. Right now, eternally, and so wise. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. God bless.